Good morning. <clears throat> my name is Carlos Duarte, and I'm president of ASLO. And it is my pleasure to uh, today to uh, present uh, two awards of ASLO and introduce the award recipients. The first award I will be presenting is the John Martin Award, which was created to uh, recognize an, a paper in aquatic sciences that has had an outstanding impact on the future development of the field. And the recipient of the 2010 John Martin Award of ASLO is uh, the paper by Fasam, Duclo, and Macular, a nitrogen-based model of plankton dynamics in the ocean mix layer, which was published in 1990 in the Journal of Marine Research. Uh, this paper has received over 500 citations since and has been instrumental in developing ecosystem models that operate at the whole basin and the whole ocean scale. It was uh, first inserted into the Princeton 3D Atlantic model, which was the, ba the first model, uh, basin-wide model of ocean circulation that included, uh, included a biological component. And since it has been used as the backbone of all uh, ecosystem models that are presently running at the ocean and basin scales. Unfortunately, the first, uh, the senior author, Mike Fassan, died uh, two years ago in 2008. And uh, I would like to take a minute before I invite uh, Dr. Duke Huclo, who, who will be uh, receiving the award, to celebrate Mike Fassan. He received a PhD from Birmingham University in the UK in 1968 and moved to take on a permanent position at the National Institute of Oceanography in Southampton, where he conducted and completed his research career. He was the first person to bring a computer on board a research vessel, and he also developed a number of instruments to examine patchiness of plankton in the ocean. And uh, his work has been uh, instrumental in developing ecosystem models for the ocean. And uh, he also chaired the International Committee of the Jagoff's uh, program, which was a major program to develop ocean-based uh, ecosystem models and uh, carbon flux models uh, a few years ago. He was honored with the Fellow, as a fellow of the Royal Society, and also received the silver medal of the Challenger Society in the UK. <clears throat> so now I would like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Hugh Duclo to come to the podium to receive the award. And I would like to uh, say one word about Hugh Duclo as well. He received a PhD from Harvard University in 1977 and he has been a uh, contributing major uh, research and ideas and data on the role of the microbial loop in the ocean ecosystem and carbon fluxes in the ocean. He has uh, chaired the U.S. Committee of the Jagos Program, and uh, he uh, succeeded Mike Fassam in chairing the International Committee of the Jagos Program. Uh, Hugh Duclo is presently director of the Ecosystem Center at Woods Hall, and is also the principal investigator of the Palmer LTER in Antarctica. So please, Hugh. So I would like to uh, read the citation of the award that reads, for a paper in aquatic sciences that has had a high impact on subsequent research in the field, uh, for the benchmark paper, Fasam, Duclo, and McKilvey, a nitrogen-based model of plankton dynamics in the ocean mix layer. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I'm deeply honored. I could spend the next 10 minutes that I have allotted for this talk just saying thank you to various people. Um, but I'm going to tell the story of this paper and then I'll uh, do more thank yous at the other end. So 500 citations, um, I thought that was pretty good. Um, it's definitely my highest cited paper. And then Emma mentioned that paper on uh, pharmaceuticals and things that had 1,600 in much less time. So 
It's, it's interesting to look at the sort of density and intensity and size of different fields and think about what influence is. <clears throat> So here's the paper. It was published in Journal of Marine Research in 1990. Um, it's kind of a long paper. It had 20 figures and two big tables today in most journals. Um, a lot of that stuff would be stuck away in a, a supplementary section. So uh, it was, it's nice that, um, that there are or were some journals that would, uh, that would allow you to be a little more expansive. And I think that's important in some of these cases. Not everything you do fits into a couple thousand words of a nature or science paper. Um, this paper was written and conceived very much in the context of um, thinking about the ecology of the open sea. Uh, it's an area that we, we mostly assume is not influenced from the sides, like the really nice talk that we just heard. Although uh, one always has to question assumptions and uh, Carlos, for example, has published papers that talk about very provocative findings that suggest uh, exogenous influence even in the center of the ocean. But uh, anyway, in this paper, um, it, uh, it tried to encompass several different classic problems about biological oceanography in one simple model. And the main one was to look together uh, in a model framework at the regulation of new production, and regenerated production. So the amount of primary production supported by uh, externally supplied nutrients uh, in the open ocean, that means either from deep water or from nitrogen fixation. And then the regenerated or recycled production, which is from uh, the in situ uh, regeneration of nutrients from organic matter. And uh, this works really well in the open sea because the new production is almost entirely fueled by nitrate. Uh, and the recycled production by ammonium, and as uh, Dugdale and Goering showed uh, in a classic paper, uh, you can use those two uh, fluxes, nitrate and ammonium, in order to differentiate these uh, global scale processes. Uh, new production uh, basically sets the limit on how much material is exported from uh, the surface of the open sea into the deep, which is the process that regulates the storage of CO2 from the atmosphere in the deep ocean. So this is a nitrogen-based model, but it has a lot of implications about the carbon cycle. And uh, the paper uh, was published just at the time when people were really beginning to recognize the importance of the ocean in those carbon cycle processes. So what I'm going to do now is um, just uh, tell you a little bit about the background of the paper and uh, why I think that it became an influential paper. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the uh, authors who were involved, and along the way I'll talk about some other people who influenced this work. I'll tell you about the origins of the paper, and then how or why uh, it did become uh, influential, and then there's a series of acknowledgments and uh, thank yous. So the, uh, the award, of course, is for the paper, not the authors. So here's the award winner. And this is what became known quickly as the fascium model. And so people tend to think of the model as, as this exact series of uh, open ecosystem components, dissolved organic nitrogen, phytoplankton, nitrate, ammonium, bacteria, zooplankton, and uh, particulate organic nitrogen, uh, which is then exported uh, from the mixed layer. But of course, really the model was more the concept of um, of how you can take a, a family of equations and uh, in a very user-friendly and flexible way make whatever model you wanted. If you wanted to split the phytoplankton up into size classes or add bacteriovores or uh, add nitrogen fixers or atmospheric deposition of nitrogen, you could do all that. And uh, you know, I think that's another important aspect of how this became uh, an influential model because lots of people could use it and we distributed it um, we, it's kind of funny. We distributed it on five and a quarter inch floppy disks. If you remember those, um, that model is probably still out there in Fortran. But of course, uh, computers can't read those things anymore. So that's an important point. It's not just any particular uh, food web structure, but it was the whole system. So here's Mike Fasham. Uh, his wife sent me this picture, and she liked this one because he's got this sort of quizzical look on his face, and. Uh, 
This is kind of a, um, an uncharacteristic picture of Mike uh, wearing a tie. It's not uncharacteristic that he would be sitting at his desk in front of a computer. But uh, I also wanted to show another picture of Mike. And uh, here he is. That's Mike in a Zodiac. This is taken during the Jagoff's um, North Atlantic Bloom Experiment in the middle of the ocean south of New Zealand in 1989. And uh, there was the German vessel, the Meteor, uh, the UK vessel, uh, the Discovery, and the American vessel, the Atlantis II, and they all rendezvoused for a joint experiment over a couple of days in May. And so this is Mike delivering these light-sensitive, important samples uh, over to the Atlantis II. And for those of you in the back of the room, if you can't see the bottom of the screen, the light-sensitive samples were a couple of contraband six-packs of Guinness that were delivered to the American colleagues on the uh, U.S. vessel. And as you know or don't know, uh, U.S. ships are pretty aggressively dry. So uh, this was a, a really important contribution of Mike to the U.S. oceanographic effort at the time, and uh, they were consumed uh, not in the light. How many of you actually uh, heard of this paper before the award was made? There's a few. How many of you read it? <laughs> yeah, that's me. How many, did anybody ever actually use the model? Wow, we really pulled that award out of the um, Scott McCulvey was the uh, third author on this paper, and he's kind of dropped out of sight. And uh, I asked Mike's wife. She didn't know what happened to him. Um, we Googled, and uh, we couldn't find him. Uh, Scott was a postdoc with Mike Fasham at Southampton, and he came out of uh, terrestrial ecology where he'd been making numerical simulation models of uh, leaf area index and light photosynthesis reactions in forests. And uh, his contribution to this model was that uh, one by one on, on an old slow PC, um, he conducted all the sensitivity runs for this model, one at a time, varying parameters and keeping track, and then integrating the results. And uh, so the one um, piece of science that I'm really going to show you in this talk is this graph here. And it's a graph that plots on the x-axis the annual uh, net primary production that the model would have generated for a particular set of parameters against the uh, annual F ratio. F is the fraction of that production that's supported by nitrate or new production. And so you can see here a result that shows that with increasing primary production, the F ratio goes down, which is um, very surprising. Uh, it's paradoxical, and it's not at all uh, what the conventional uh, understanding at the time was. And, and the understanding was that we had, you can't see the laser too well, but it, there was just the opposite, uh, an inverse relationship. The more external nutrient you pump in, the more production you'd get, which makes a lot of sense. And that, of course, was the basis of the paper uh, 1977 by Epley and uh, Peterson, which won the Martin Award two years ago. And, and the difference here is that each one of these is a different ecosystem with a different set of assumptions about exactly what the structure of the system might be. And in particular, the structure of the rate processes in the system. Uh, the original Epley and Peterson uh, talked more about seasonal evolution, where you do see the opposite effect. But uh, in here, different ecosystems uh, might have an entirely different kind of organization. And so that was um, uh, McKelvey's contribution to this work. So the origins, um, the origins go back uh, to many different things, but um, one of the breakthroughs that really resulted in moving forward and getting this thing into publication form was that Mike and I were at the ASLO AGU Ocean Science Meeting in New Orleans in 1988, and we were sitting one morning, not at the meeting, but uh, down at Café du Monde, and Mike was telling me about how the model kept crashing, and he said, uh, and we started to look at it, and I said, well, what are you using for... Uh, for feeding the bacteria. And he said, well, the DON pool. And the, the DON pool um, in the open ocean is um, measured in micromoles, five or 10 micromolar at the surface. And of course, what microbial ecologists know is that the substances that the bacteria are actually using are nanomolar concentrations. And I said, well, Mike, that whole big oceanographic, that whole oceanic uh, DON reservoir is not available to bacteria on the time scales of this model. And he said, oh, that's easy to change. And he did it, and the model ran, and, uh, and, and that's the rest of the story. So that was kind of um, 
one of my uh, contributions to this model. Uh, why did it become influential? Well, it was an early product of Jay Goff's, which went on to be a very uh, successful and productive uh, international uh, research program. And the model was conceived very much as a tool for Jay Goff so that people could, could look quantitatively at different processes and then think about different measurements that we needed in the program where you can't do everything. The original goal was to use the model by coupling it or embedding it into the 3D circulation Princeton model, as Carlos mentioned, uh, by Jorge Sarmiento and colleagues at Princeton. And, uh, and so just at this time, those 3D models uh, were beginning to mature with, uh, with the capability to put ecosystems and uh, nitrogen components inside. And, uh, and this model uh, of ours was uh, instrumental in sort of being the first off the line at doing that. <clears throat> also importantly, we tried to attack several classic problems in biological oceanography. So the original ecosystem models were mostly just phytoplankton, zooplankton, nitrate models. And uh, that PZN backbone uh, goes back to a very famous person in the early history of ASLO, Gordon Riley. Uh, Jeff Evans and John Parslow wrote a paper uh, in the mid-'80s which had a new mixed-layer formulation, and they showed how seasonal evolution of ocean ecosystems followed mixed-layer dynamics, and that was in this model. I talked to you about new and regenerated production uh, by Doug Dale, Epley, and Peterson. Uh, the microbial loop is in this model. It was the first one to include that as well. It had a very uh, crude representation, but it showed that the bacterial production measurements that were being made uh, in the 80s and 90s actually made sense quantitatively uh, in a model format. And then um, the model also had export. Uh, the uh, sedimentation of particulate organic matter out of the uh, ocean surface layer. And of course, that's a problem that John Martin was very uh, influential in attacking as well. Another interesting point, I think important, is that this model emphasized rate processes. Most models prior to this reported standing stocks. So you'd see the annual cycle of phytoplankton and zooplankton biomass, but you wouldn't see the growth rates or the primary production rates. And the model actually integrated all those so you could look at, at the rates over time, and you could also actually look at the annual integrals, which almost no measurement program will, will give you with any kind of uh, reasonable certainty. So here it is again, and just to summarize some of these points, um, there's the PZN backbone in the model that goes back uh, all the way to Riley and uh, forward to John Steele, uh, Rubluski, and many, many others. New and regenerated production, the flux of um, nitrogen in its two main forms uh, was in the model. And that was the real original motivation for doing this. And then the microbial loop showing how uh, dissolved organic matter lost from phytoplankton and zooplankton is harvested by bacteria and how that returns to the food web. So a lot of people to acknowledge for this. Um, Mike's wife, uh, Josh, Fas Josh Fasham, was uh, very helpful in uh, telling me about uh, uh, some of Mike's favorite things and, and giving me pictures of Mike. Uh, Jorge Sarmiento uh, recruited us to begin to couple that model into the 3D efforts. Uh, Trevor Platt from Canada for a long time had been emphasizing the need to use rate processes uh, to understand ecology, not just standing stock dynamics. Uh, funding is important. Uh, the UK NERC, uh, which funded Mike for his entire career. National Science Foundation, which supported Jay Goffs along with other agencies. Uh, Journal of Marine Research, um, Don Rice, who's actually at NSF, and Doreen Orsieri at Yale. Um, they were very broad-minded. The paper had actually very, very skeptical reviews. And we wrote back and said, well, yes, but you should publish it anyway, and they did. And last but um, hardly least, I want to acknowledge John Martin and his family. Um, so we tried to take a traditional look at, uh, at a, we wanted to take a new look at a traditional problem. And this strategy characterized John Martin's approach in many ways. He always looked at big problems, and he always tried to find new ways to look at them. 
Uh, Mike and I discussed our work on several occasions at JGOF's meetings with uh, John, trying to clarify what the formulations for export might be. So it's especially gratifying to receive the Martin Award for this work. He was influential in our work, and he was very influential in JGOF's as well. So for all of us, I'm proud to receive this award. I'm glad to be here to accept it on behalf of Mike's family. And I want to thank the awards committee, the ASLO community, uh, for continuing to recognize John Martin's contributions and uh, for everybody who follows in that path. Thank you very much. <clears throat>